大家好,我是Allbranchdown So you might have seen a lot of videos on fasting where they talk about the 16-8 or the 14-10 and you don't know which one is which and what they do for you In this video, we'll go over all the different types of fasting and what each one can do to your body as well as you can come away with deciding how to plan your own fast so that it can suit your own goals Before we go into the different types of fasting I actually want to go over the terminology The first type is actually under 24 hours and a lot of times we say intermittent fasting including myself but actually it should be called time-restricted feeding because it's not really a true fast until it's after 24 hours and that is the second type after 24 hours we can call it intermittent fasting or fasting in general so I'm going to discuss about the fasting length first as a category okay so we won't talk about what you can and cannot eat yet I'll talk about that later but the first category is going to be the time-restricted feeding group which is anything that's less than 24 hours so the first thing I want you guys to understand about fasting is that it works more like a spectrum and so your body actually goes through many stages during a fast and the deeper you go the more effects you'll get the first part which is less than 24 hours is really much very much like a spectrum in that there's nothing that's going to be concrete about any specific hour that you hit that will give you any effects however the deeper you go into the fast there are going to be key milestones that will actually cause a bigger physiological effect to the body the first category of fasting is the simplest and that is under 24 hours also known as time restricted feeding and you might have heard of 12 12 or 16 8 even 23-1 is also known as OMAD. So the first number is your fasting period, and the second number is your eating window in hours. At this point of the fast, your body still has plenty of glucose stored in your liver and muscles, but you're keeping your insulin levels as well as your calorie intake low, which is actually both very good for your metabolic health, like your blood lipids and your blood pressure, and even good for fat loss. You might just get quite hungry during TRF, but if you actually do this regularly, you won't even get hungry. The next category is greater than 24 hours, but less than three days, the true fast begins. And this is actually a very important milestone at the three day marker. So when we're talking about the greater than 24 hours, where it's really, again, a spectrum where your body is really depleting a lot of your glyco glycogen levels, and you're not gonna have any glucose left after 24 hours. This is when you switch over to more of a fat burning mode or getting into what's known as ketosis. After the 24 hour mark, your body really starts to break down your fat cells known as triglycerides. And on the triglyceride is a glycerol backbone that keeps the fatty acids together. This glycerol backbone becomes glucose and actually needs to go to your brain because your brain still needs to function on glucose. But it is now starting to take in ketone bodies for fuel, which the rest of your body is now using as well. After the 24 hour mark, you may start to feel a bit dizzy or lightheaded because your blood sugar level plummets and so your body is now adjusting and switching over to fat burning mode. Hunger comes and goes at this point and a lot of people will, may find this very discomforting. The second day is typically known to be the hardest day of a three day fast. I'm actually myself going through the middle of a three day fast and I've just passed the hardest part myself and I'm feeling much better. The reason why I'm continuing this fast is because I really want the benefits of a three day fast. And so that leads us to our last category, which is uh, three plus days of fasting. And the reason why you wanna hit this point, this milestone is because we can now start to enjoy the benefits of autophagy and apoptosis, which are processes in your body that actually clears out a lot of your dead cells or your weakened cells in replace of newer cells. Your body also starts to repair your genome. So a lot of the DNA damages that you may have suffered just from day-to-day -day life, that actually starts to get repaired. And you're really deep into ketosis now, so you're really burning fat like crazy. At this point, your insulin and your growth hormone IGF-1 has now bottomed out, which now allows for anti-cancer and anti-aging effects to begin. Also, inflammation goes down and your immune system improves. Your hunger continues to go down as it becomes less and less of an issue. And your fat burning mode is now in full gear. And so you'll actually be producing even more ketone bodies than before, burning even more fat. Despite all the benefits, if you still want to do a fast that's longer than three days, then you should be aware of all the nutrients that you may be lacking. If you really want to do it, I would advise that you seek medical supervision. So I've done a lot of fasting videos in the past and I've gotten a lot of questions or comments about what they can and cannot eat. So I'm going to go over the different dietary restrictions for the different types of fast and how they will affect your body. A lot of people ask me if they can eat this or that, for example, like adding milk to tea or coffee. 
Now, before I give an answer to that, it's important for us to understand first that anything that contains vitamins, minerals, or calories will prevent gut rest. Also, lemon water or bone broth both can stimulate gut for digestion, including supplements and sugar substitutes. However, if you still decide to take them during your fast, you can still derive benefits for your metabolic health and your longevity. If you just have black coffee and tea without milk, then you actually get the added benefits of autophagy and anti-cancer properties again after the three day fasting period. The last is the strictest of all, and that is the water only fast. And this is actually also good for everything I mentioned above, but also gut rest. And that is really good for restoring your di digestive system, like the villi inside your intestinal walls. Um, also just resetting your hormone regulation of enzymes and digestive uh, hormones as well. I do want to state that if you have a medical disease or you have any digestive problems that you should probably seek out your doctor first to get their uh, advice before you going into any of these fasts. You should be educated and prepared so that you know what you're getting yourself into. However, if you don't have any of these complications, then doing any of the fasting that's less than 72 hours shouldn't be too big of a deal. So after this video, I hope you can now understand what you need to do to put together a fasting plan to hit your goals. And I hope you found that useful. As always, please leave any questions in the comments below and I'll see you next time.